Hey y'all, what's up? This is Bud Elliott here uh, of the Nolcast here for, uh, unfortunately, not a Winston reaction podcast, just an instant reaction, which means, of course, that FSU lost its rivalry game against the Florida Gators, 24 to 21. Go ahead and break this down. As always, we will uh, we'll do a little fuller breakdown later on in the week, probably a Monday nighter. If I had to guess on that, once I get a chance to rewatch uh, this uh, difficult game to watch, I guess you could say. FSU 348 yards, Florida 357 yards. Final score looks pretty close. Um, I don't want to end the season on a bad note. Uh, worse than the, the you know obviously losing the game. I, I'm not sure this game was particularly close. Uh, I think you can argue that it was, but I I, I don't know. Uh, at the point that Florida went up 24 to seven, they are doubling Florida State in yards. They were the physically superior team. I thought they were the tougher football team uh, today, as far as pushing people around. And ultimately, I think they also sucked it sucked FSU into a game that was a little more undisciplined than you usually see Florida State play. All right. Uh, just really uh, not not a good performance by the Knowles today. Let's go ahead and go over some of the key things. Um, number one, I will say that Florida State was pretty damn lucky to be in this game at the half. Let's review what happened in the first half, right? So Jordan Travis playing okay, and then he gets whacked uh, and his, his arm, he has to leave the game. Comes back in briefly, throws a good pass. Everybody's like, oh, nice. And then ultimately is uh, is having to go to the locker room. Uh, FSU ends up playing a series with Mackenzie Milton and a series with Tate Rodemaker, and those guys can't play. So they basically waste two series there on that, which is problematic. Uh, but you don't really have a better option there. It, it, we, it's not like Trevor Purdy was, was any better. So you're out gained by about 90 yards in the first half, and yet the score is 7-7 seven to seven, uh, because despite the fact that Florida was 8 of 10, 8 of 10 in the first half on third down, which is kind of hard to do, uh, they threw three interceptions. Two of them were really, really costly interceptions, and uh, that kept FSU in the game. And my thought was Florida should be up a lot more than they are right now because they're not up at all. I mean, they should have, you know, probably a seven, 10 point lead here uh, based on how well they moved the ball and, and how poorly FSU moved the ball. And so you thought, okay, FSU will have a nice shot here in the second half because Jordan Travis did re-enter the game. Uh, a little missed opportunity there to end the first half with uh, Jordan scrambling, doesn't get down in time in order to call a timeout. Probably needed to get down about two seconds earlier, I would think, on his scramble. Uh, but you know, ultimately on the day, uh, you just got pushed around too much, you know? And your special teams hurt you too. So on the pushing around front, right, Treshawn Ward, four carries for 25 yards, Toa Philly, five for 22, Deshaun Corbin, six for 10, uh, we knew the offensive line was pretty banged up going into this one. We weren't sure how Florida's run defense would play. Florida's run defense was excellent in this game, and that's because they physically whipped you at the point of attack. That's an area that Florida State is working to get incrementally better. They are not recruiting at a level that would suggest they're going to take a massive leap uh, in, in, in you know like a single year's time. Uh, but the offensive line this year, I think, especially when you count for the injuries, but even without the injuries, was probably the best offensive line play in a couple years. When when everybody was healthy, it was actually downright, I don't know, below average, average as opposed to bad at times. Sometimes maybe maybe above average. Uh, but what you saw on the flip side was I, I thought Florida's offensive line uh, was really pretty damn good. And, you know, they're, they're at a different level right now than Florida State is physically. Now, they've got other problems, obviously. That's why they fired their coach. But FSU was not able to get just an absolute ton of pressure on Florida uh, like it had on previous opponents, you know, like, like it did 
on Tyler Van Dyke of Miami, right? Or Phil Dracovic last week against Boston College. Florida backed up the numbers that we saw uh, in the in, in the, uh, the the pregame podcast that we did. We said, look, Florida actually, for all the the flack that their offensive line coach gets, think about their numbers here. Number one in passing down sack rate, number thirty four in standard down sack rate, number six in sack rate overall, number forty six in pressure uh, allowed. So pretty good offensive line, especially when you factor in that the quarterback is is not that good. UF's quarterback play really kept FSU in this game a pretty good bit. And then uh, you know, eventually they, they made a couple plays. But 357 yards allowed is, is not, not the worst thing in the world. But they did have some really just backbreaking, poor situational football plays by FSU. Now, of course, you can tell me that the, uh, the interceptions were good situational football plays. And at least one of them was. One of them was just a terrible throw. Uh, by Emory Jones, and hey, you know, FSU picked it, so give them credit there. Uh, but I, I thought that was the the difference in the game, was was Florida was better situationally for sure. Uh, you also had some really troubling punts in this game, uh, just, and, and and punt return was, was quite poor as well. So lo- looking at the drive here, Um, Florida started drives at FSU's 45 after a punt. Uh, they started the drive at FSU's 40 after a punt. Um, you know, they started one at FSU's 33 after a punt. You had Ontario Wilson muff a punt after a really good punt by Master Mono, one of the few good ones they had on the day. You got it, UF backed up. They're at their own three. You get a stop. The Florida kid hits a great punt. No doubt about it. He hits, it's a hell of a punt. However, it, it's still a punt you should catch. And Terry Wilson drops it. So that gives Florida uh, the field position to go down and kind of get the backbreaking score. That was the one that put them up. Uh, was that the 17-7? Uh, the to 7? Score. FSU fought hard in the red zone. They just, you know, they, they couldn't force enough field goals there, um, especially not not there. And then, I mean, that was just that was kind of a backbreaker. You you, you knew with with how physical Florida was playing uh, that Florida State was unlikely to be able to get back in this game, and yet they did. And look, guys, take away what what you want from this. If if you want to say, look, FSU's fourth quarter comeback stuff is kind of fake garbage time stuff. Okay, I'll buy that. If you want to say, hey, look, they continue to fight. In the history of this rivalry, we have certainly seen huge com- comebacks. You know, shout out Danny Cannell, obviously, uh, for that. I I do think, though, if you look at it, I mean, Florida's doubling you up in yards when they go ahead by three scores with, what, 17 minutes left in the game, I think it is? Um, no, excuse me. Um uh, 12 minutes left in the game. Is it technically garbage time? Eh. Does it feel like garbage time? Yeah. Did Florida's defense start playing you a little bit differently? I think so. Just not physical enough. Uh, not not a good enough football team. Um, FSU finished the year an improved football team. I don't think there's any doubt that they took step forwards this year that all FSU fans can be pretty proud of, right? Uh you know, we said, hey, if they if they got to a top 50 SP Plus ranking, which, again, nobody sits around on Thanksgiving and says, hey, they're top 50 SP Plus. But I said, that to me, that would be real signs of tangible progress coming off what you were last year. And they did that. Now, after week four, they were 73rd. As of this morning, they were 44th. We'll see what they finish. They'll probably be right around there, I, I would I would guess. Um this team you know, took took real steps, just also showed today a lot of the limitations that it has. Uh, inability to run the football with, with, with the backs, even when Jordan Travis is in there. Good number of his runs were, were on scrambles today. On design runs, uh, FSU is just pretty much shut down. Um, and I do think that's a physicality issue. So that's problematic. Um, you know, very problematic. 
Got to get more physical there next year. Got to see if you can bring in uh, maybe an additional offensive line transfer and also some help at the receiver spot. Let's go ahead and dig into a couple more things here. Uh, Parchment was your leading receiver on the day with 53 yards, but that's on 10 targets. So 5.3 per targets, pretty poor. Uh, he got bodied by a freshman uh, corner in Marshall there for Florida. He's a good, you know, good recruit, obviously, five star kid. Uh, but uh, you know, Parchment will probably go pro in something other than sports, and I, I think you saw it there on that play. A lot of credit to Jordan Travis for continuing to fight, obviously, uh, but just not good enough. Florida's a better team than you are, and uh, I think it says a lot about the depth of this rebuild that you, know, you lost to a team that is. I think fairly clearly better than you are. And they fired their coach and we're over here talking about progress. And I think not incorrectly, right? Definitely was legitimate progress here on the year, uh, but not enough to make a bowl. Obviously, I mean, the, the Jacksonville State game there where Fuller's defense just crushes you uh, and, and you give up 27 there at, at, at a time where you, you really need to lean on them. Um, you know, what, 11 of 19 allowed? or Well, 18 because the, the the kneel downs. 11 of 18 allowed on third down. That's going to be tough to get it done. I, I Disappointing there, for sure, given what you saw out of the defense the last two weeks. I, I thought they were playing better uh, today. Bit of a mixed bag. Let's see you go through a couple more things. Offensive uh, success rate, UF had the uh, had the edge there. Um, sack adjusted yards per passing attempt, 4.6. So that's that's horrendous. Uh, Florida, which again, didn't have a very good passing day, 6.5. Just tough. Uh, again, most of your most of your uh, yardage did come on big plays, right? So rushes of 10 plus. Passes at 15 plus. Uh, let me see what percentage here. Let's take a look. So 240 over 348 yards came on uh, came on big plays. Florida was a little more consistent, right? 164 of their yards. Uh, so about 35% of Florida's yards came on on big plays. That's tough, uh, but you know it. It is what it is you got to try to get better next year i think you, you know a, a bowl uh, is is within reach next year finally get a decent recruiting class coming in tallahassee that'll take a little time to develop that's why we've been talking about how this is a long-term rebuild um, but a disappointing finish to the year if you look at the year though in, in totality i think it's more of a um Kind of an encouraging finish down the stretch. Played Clemson tough-ish. Clemson's definitely better than you are. Got waxed by NC State. Okay. You know, beat beat Miami. Went on the road and beat Boston College. Lost to Florida. It was the start of the year. That really killed you. Losing Notre Dame close. Probably no shame in that, right? Considering that they only have one loss on the season. Uh, the Jacksonville State game. Not really being competitive against Wake and Louisville. Depend again with Louisville, depending on how you feel. Like that that's kind of a similar thing here, except to a bigger degree uh, than Florida was, given how much they were up. This is what a weird game. Uh, the the special teams, though. I mean, where where did these punts from Mastromano come from? I mean, just terrible. Fifteen yard punt. He had a sixty two yarder, which was awesome. And then you look at the next punt, a, a 40 yarder that only got to the 25. That's not any good. Uh, I, I would, I mean, especially because it wasn't like a fair catch, it, it, it was a returnable punt. Um, and a 35 yarder total line drive that UF gets a great return on of 14 yards. And then a 15-yard penalty on top of it for targeting on Darian Williamson, which is going to happen. I mean, it's, it's a wide receiver tackling. And then a, a, a great punt to the UF one. Uh, although you're punting from Florida is 36, no man's land there on uh, on fourth and 16. 
that's just tough, man. Um, you're you're not you're not good enough to survive mistakes. And Florida uh, gifted you a couple opportunities in this game as well with those interceptions. So um, this result certainly could have been worse. I think there are also some alternate realities uh, where FSU maybe wins this game. If they if they played a bunch of times, I'm not picking Florida to win 100 out of 100. Um, but ultimately, not enough, not enough on the day. And you just you, you didn't get the disappointing thing was you didn't force enough third and longs, right? And then you, like Florida had what five third and nine plus. One of them obviously is the kneel down. They just had a ton of third and shorts, though. Seven third and shorts on the day in which they went five of seven. That allowed them to keep drives alive and was uh, was big time for them. So. Anyway, I don't know what else to say about this. Um, Florida out physical you. They made a ton of mistakes. You also made mistakes. Both teams committed a boatload of penalties. I thought the officiating this in this game was not great, but I don't believe it was actually determinative of the outcome, if that makes sense. I just I don't think it had anything really to do with the final outcome personally. Uh, I thought they had a lot of calls but go both ways. They had a whole bunch of reviews. And yeah, I'm just I'm not getting into that. Last week I do think it had a pretty pretty real impact on the outcome of the game. pretty much all I got today. We will talk to you guys. Uh, well, no, I may have some more notes. Let me look here. No, that's it. All right, guys. I'll see you next time on the Nolcast. Somewhat disappointing year. Yeah, your win total is five and a half. For Vegas, they come up a half win short. It's not really about this game. It's more about that Jack State game that you lost and, uh, you know, made improvements. I think the fans who are more informed are going to see the improvements of this staff. The vast majority of the fan base doesn't listen to podcasts or anything like that. Y'all, if you listen to this, are among the more diehards, the more informed. The average fan out there. When they go ask for money, he's going to say, "Well, you lost to Jacksonville State." Mm, they're they're not going to see the improvement. We'll talk about that more next time on Nolcast. We got to review our snap count draft. We're going to do our transfer portal episode. A lot of really good off season content uh, to come. But unable to make a bowl, and we'll finish with a losing record for the fourth straight year. And anybody who tells you this is not a long term rebuild or has been telling you that is uh, is full of it. So I'll see y'all next.